cats. I've got the Brighton Marathon to train for right now in 2023. I've got the perfect block of time to get stuck into some tailored training for that full Snickers distance. So which shoes will I be using for what efforts within the coming weeks? Let me run you through my picks for my marathon training, shoe by shoe, session by session. Welcome to the channel footwear friends and thanks for joining me. Be sure to subscribe if you're enjoying the running content here on the channel and ensure you hit the bell of plus one notifications so you don't miss any of the videos. You don't want to be a fool. I always thought the Vaporfly Next Percent was kind of like the shoe of plus four running. If you've played Skyrim, you might know what I'm on about. It also helps the channel out a turn if you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. Thanking you, ta. Okay, let's get into my marathon training shoe rotation. I've got a wide range of shoes at my disposal right now. It's kind of always the case, really. It's a perfect time to give you a rundown of the various different options that I'm going to use for different efforts. I'm getting ready for that Brighton Marathon in April, and I want to ensure I'm at tip-top condition. Maybe my selections will help you formulate your own running shoe rotation. Who knows? So kicking off with those easy, more sustainable endurance type paces. That's going to be the bulk of my running really as I gear up ready for that marathon. At the moment, I feel I'm going to be reaching perhaps for one of three different shoes. The first one up, the Reebok Symmetros 2. One of those nicely balanced shoes with enough cushion for easier sessions, but also the comfort in the upper as well. It just feels like a shoe that isn't really all that around your foot. I think it makes it quite an appealing shoe to don for the daily grind. Basically, the Float Ride Energy 4 with a touch more build in the boot and a little bit more stability due to the additional pieces in the heel. The outsole too is practically one that works for almost anything really. A sure fire pick for good daily shoe. The other model that seems to fit within this bracket right now is probably the Puma Velocity Nitro 2. I have a couple of pairs of those at my disposal so it seems like a good pick as they'll take the brunt of my daily miles without issue. I think I'll probably throw in the New Balance Fuel Cell SC Trainer here. Seems like a shoe that's going to be good for easy recovery type miles. I think I've got pretty much everything covered there for the easier daily stuff. Short range squash, that seems to be what the SC trainer is all about. I think the Puma and the Reebok seem to be a little bit overlooked, I suppose. But in fairness, they're still pretty fresh. And in terms of other shoes in the collection, these don't have all that many miles. So perfect choices to absorb the daily grind, really, around about 8 minutes 15 per mile. What about those marathon pace miles? I'm going to be looking at a target pace of around about 7 minutes 30 per mile. So that's about 4 minutes 40 per kilometer. I feel myself gravitating towards the Adios Pro 3 and perhaps the Deviate Nitro 2 at the moment. Both these shoes have worked really well for me recently at those types of paces. The fit's good, I really enjoy the cushion and they're quite versatile shoes really. Forgiving yet nimble without all that extra ballast that you don't really want when you're going at pace. Now, I'm not forgetting I'm going to be doing the bulk of my training in the colder winter months. As such, I need shoes that are going to stand the test against the elements and still provide some good traction as well. The Puma probably shades it in terms of the outsole grip. On the drier, less treacherous days, though, I'll probably go for the Adios Pro 3. The slightly lighter profile is really to my liking. I am enjoying that shoe. Even on wet concrete, actually, the Continental rubber rings true. It's not my marathon shoe though, I just can't seem to dial in the upper sort of lockdown with the Adios Pro 3 in quite the consistent way that I'd want to. I do though really like the Adios Pro's upper. It seems to have some sort of way of avoiding taking on debris and grit. Works superbly well on the wet weather too. It doesn't seem to absorb moisture whatsoever. So for marathon pace training sessions, I think those two will be my pick for the time being at least. We've got to talk about shoes now for those longer runs. So I'm going to be scaling those up from my sort of half marathon training around about 13, 14 miles up to about 20 miles towards the end of the training block. Two shoes spring to mind, really. One of those, the modified Alpha Fly Next Percent 2. Probably good for those longer training runs with all that cushion. I mean, there's masses of it there. I think there's a little bit too much extra bulk with the Alpha Fly 2 for racing as such. For me, it purely remains as a longer training option. Yeah, I mean, it's the king of cushion, but I think for me, it's a overkill. I think it's one that needs quite an aggressive approach to get the best out of it. The other shoe I can see coming in handy for these type of efforts will be the Endorphin Speed 3 from Saucony. There's a load of life left in that midsole yet. Yeah, I haven't got anywhere near 100 miles and it's feeling kind of better and better the more I use it. It's absolutely 
absolutely enough cushion there in the Speed 3 and some stability perhaps for those longer runs, especially since I sorted out the insoles or replaced those with the p backs ones and put in some slightly more firm rigid laces. Perhaps if I'm going to run a longer effort without any mixed in intervals or reps at faster pace, I'll probably reach for that SC trainer from New Balance. Though I'm kind of still making up my mind on those a little bit. They're not entirely what I thought they were going to be. They just don't seem to have that propulsive feel that some of the other models that I have in the collection right now have. Yeah, I mean, they're very cushioned, but I just don't really see where there's a difference between those and the RC Elite 2. I mean, the Elite is a much lighter shoe by quite a margin, actually. I think for out and out max cushion, being a stick thin man that kind of doubles as a human windsock they just don't really work all that well for me i'll probably throw in there the primax as well i've got a couple of pairs of those if i'm very fatigued perhaps and still have to do those longer runs that might be a shoe that i put on to get those runs done get them under my belt what about race shoes though i hear you say well i strongly believe that it's a good idea to get some sustained test miles into any race shoe that you're going to use i don't want to just pull something out of the box and use it anything could happen the rubber could fall off the laces could break there might be a manufacturing defect or something so i want to get some reasonable miles into the shoe i'm going to use at least for the race not enough to put some damage into the midsole or outsole but enough to put it through its paces to ensure that it's up to the time Ask. you don't want to put a shoe on and then realize there's an issue with it on race day it's kind of like pulling a guitar out of a case and using it for the first time at a gig just wouldn't do it at present i think my race day shoe will be the vaporfly next percent too i've tried many of the other models and i think for the marathon distance this one will probably be my best bet i have confidence that over 20 miles i'll still be able to run in that shoe without any issue whatsoever i know i can run a marathon in it actually i've done it before three hours 23 in a time trial just on my own to see if i could run a marathon and i could that was in the next percent ekadon edition i think so what i'll probably do is grab a pair of the discounted vaporfly next percent two there's loads of colorways at the moment i don't care which one it is i'll try and get the cheapest one i possibly can until that point though i do have the vaporfly next percent gyakuso to use up that shoe again is one i modified with some different laces i can get a few more miles out of that zoom x midsole that shoe is more forgiving than a priest and it's probably a shoe that i can reach for if i want to run a longer effort perhaps injecting some intervals or reps in there somewhere at a faster pace i can imagine that there's going to be more discounted pairs of the vaporfly next percent 2 flying around soon as we get ever closer towards the vaporfly next percent 3 release i think that shoe's going to be quite the departure from the previous version in terms of the upper anyway and as such perhaps it's not something that i want to gamble with at running 26.2 miles when you've got a key race like that you want to use a tool you know is going to work for you i haven't got an issue running uh slower paces with the next percent these are a beta pair they're going to take the brunt of a lot of winter weather they're going to take the punishment so i don't really mind that's what these shoes are for use them up use them or lose them utilizing that pair i've already got will mean that i'm very familiar with the shoe i'm going to use when it comes to race day it's a bit like when you buy a new pair of your favorite jeans they kind of feel fresh and new but they still have that familiar feel there'll be a little bit more extra pop and rigidity there but the familiarity underfoot will also be there so ideal so that's pretty much all the shoes for my marathon training rotation if you think i should perhaps switch things around you agree you disagree let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments let me know your marathon training shoe rotations too i'm very interested to hear them musical interlude for you today's musical interlude comes from the 2009 album from the brian setzer orchestra it's called songs from lonely avenue there's some fantastic stuff on here there's a real city vibe about this one i love the track dead man incorporated some brilliant guitar work on that one almost like a gangster vibe about brian setzer's guitar sound here kiss me deadly is this sort of sleazy underworld type feel you can imagine some smoky club somewhere with some jazz playing in the background i love the subtle and classic sound of lonely avenue though almost sounds like it could have been a rap pack type track absolutely brilliant lyrics on that one and the string arrangements are superb another classic from setzer go and check it out from the brian setzer orchestra songs from lonely avenue thanks for tuning in people it's always appreciated 
hit that subscribe button, click the bell below for notifications if the new video launches, hit that like button and also share this video with your running buddies. Hit us up with a super thanks as well if you want to help support the channel on a more ad hoc basis. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.